light doesn't come from what you have heard, it's what you are presently hearing. The enemy was behind him. The Red Sea was before him. God told Moses, stretch your hand over the Red Sea. And he did. And the Bible says, it's open. I do believe in the, the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Because when the Holy Ghost comes to church, <laughs> things happen. Are you hear me here? Hallelujah. I said when the Holy Ghost comes to church. I remember years ago when my wife was pregnant with Elijah. I was, there was a guy on our soccer team. I used to play soccer too. I was a good soccer player, but a different subject for another day. I was playing soccer, and this guy, he was very negative. And we got to be, be careful. The Bible said that don't even fellowship with negative people. Because the Bible said um, evil, evil communication can damage good manners. So the Bible even tells us not to even fellowship with negative people. But I didn't know better then. I was with this man, and he was... He was he was, he, he always, he, he liked to play what I call the devil's advocate. I'm not believing in the devil's advocate. I don't believe nothing about the devil. The devil is defeated. But he was always, he played all his mental games. He asked me one day, do you believe in, in taking, in giving blood? I said, I don't like needles. And they could knock me out, take blood as much, take about, I'm fine. I'm anointed, the Holy Ghost will reproduce it anyway. But I don't believe in, I don't like needles. Needless and not us get along. You know, so he said, Yeah, but but what if, what if, see, what if, what if, what if when your wife is giving birth to the baby, the the, the um she needs she need to have blood? I said, What? I said, I don't want to have this conversation with you. <laughs> Demons in the form of intelligence. So he said, yeah, but, but what if, what if, what if during the delivery she needs to have blood? Would you give blood? I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Demons. So, then I found myself thinking these thoughts. For days, these thoughts bother me. Well, why did, why did I'm like, shut up, Brent, shut up, shut up, shut up. So my wife is in, in now, she's in delivery. And all of a sudden, Elijah the, his his um, heart rate is dropping because the umbilical call cord is is wrapped around his neck. Remember, baby, and the heart rate is dropping, and all I'm hearing is this dumb guy head voice in my head. And I knew if I could get to a place of quietness where the Holy Ghost can manifest, I knew I'll be. I know I have to calm myself down in my thoughts because I'm hearing this guy in, in my head and Elijah Hartman is dropping, dropping, dropping. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I remember walking into a room. I just said, Jesus, I love you so much. And the presence of God came in that room. And immediately the, our doctor came and he, he helped and everything was fine. All I'm trying to say to you, in the presence of God, things can be tamed. Things can be solved in the presence of God. Hallelujah. David said, as the deer goes after the water brook, even so my soul goes after thee. Everything can be tamed. Problems can be changed in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Develop that type of appetite for the presence of God where, where yokes can be destroyed. Amen. Because at that time, I didn't have time to find the 16 steps for a miracle. I need the Holy Ghost now. Uh, are you here with me? Uh, Sometimes I don't have time to find my notes and find the scripture verses and, and, and where the sermon is, where the, where the nine steps, or oh, apostles nine steps. No, no, no. I want God now. 
I want the Holy Ghost when? Now. What do you do? You quiet your mind. You let him come. And when he comes, he made the crooked place straight. Hallelujah. Come and give God a big clap offering. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Can I switch microphone now? Can I switch microphone? Hallelujah. Can you hear me right? You hear that beautiful accent, right? Beautiful. I love my accent. It's from heaven. Remember I told him, when you go there, you sound just like me. <laughs> so, so there'll be no surprise. When you get to heaven, there's no culture shock. Glory be to God. For years, I used to hate my accent. But one day I discover in the book of Psalms that the Holy Spirit create my nose, create my skin, create my voice. I said, if the, if the most intelligent person who was responsible to create the universe decide the shape of my nose and my big lips, I'm okay. So that was the day I fell in love with myself. I don't care what you think about it. Don't care what you think about it. That's why I don't believe in Botox and Satax and whatever tax. My face are fine. Lips are fine. Nose are fine. Cheeks are fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I have you turn your Bible to the book of Revelation? Revelation. Say open doors. And we're continuing talking about the door of revelation. The door of revelation. And I want to say it emphatically that we don't need to pray for the doors to be open. The doors already open. Amen. Amen. Faith lives in a realm where there is no limits. Faith operates in the timeless zone of God. Faith functions this way. Not this way. Faith function up first. You have to agree with heaven first. If you're still trying to figure out if the doors are open or how to open the doors, you'll be in trouble. You have to agree what God says. That the doors are open. Come on, talk to me here. God said, how can two of you, come on, walk together or work together if there is no agreement and he tells us this year it is the year of the open door we're not trying to open the doors this year we're not trying to pray them open this year we got to believe what God says this year that I have set before you an open door I don't care what the x-ray said. I don't care what the doctor says. God says it's open door. I believe the doors are open. Come on. Don't get cute with God. I find the North American church gets so cute with God. If God say you're healed, it means you're healed. If God say you are blessed, he's not saying you're trying to be blessed. He say you are blessed. It means you're living in the present tense of the word of God. If you need things to change on earth, it might look like the doors are closed on earth. But come into agreement with heaven. Oh, I'm talking to myself again. Come into agreement with heaven. You know, years ago, I realized something. That every time I pray for people, I stay healthy. So I discover every time I have pain in my body, I give it all to God. And while I'm praying for people, because the Bible says that when Job, come on, when Job prayed for his friends, Job was healed. And the Bible says, when you watered, you yourself will be watered. When you give, it will come back to you. And then sometimes I'm standing here, I give an altar call, my body is in pain. By the time I finish for two people, the pain is all gone. Hallelujah. What am I doing? You're coming into agreement with heaven. 
come into agreement with heaven. And God said, this year, I'll be having a, you know, like my sign, my, my nice sign here, for that for school of ministry. We designed it for school ministry. I, I didn't want to take it down because I put it up again in, in two days. But very soon I have a big one here with a big door to remind you the doors are open. So revelation, and we're talking about today the door of revelation. The door of what? Revelation. And I'm going to go into an area of expectancy today. Because expectancy is the breeding ground of the miraculous. Expectancy is the hand of faith. I said expectancy is the hand of faith. When God smells expectancy. When God sees expectancy. He moves. Because expectancy is faith. And this is the victory. That overcome sickness. That overcome the woe. Even our faith. Even our faith. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And the type of faith that we have is the God kind of faith. We have the Jesus type of faith. I told people the difference between, oh God. When Jesus was talking in the gospel to his disciples, he was ministering on the the old covenant still. Jesus ministered under the old covenant. A covenant only come into activation when the testator died. And Jesus was the one who established the new covenant. Which means the new covenant wasn't established while he was physically on the earth. Because he didn't die as yet. Come on. He had to die first. And when he died and God raised him from the dead, the New, the new Testament was established. Amen. So even there are some teachings from Jesus. Not all the teachings of Jesus belongs to you as New Testament Christians. There are some teachings of Jesus where he said, have faith. But for us, we have faith. Because we have his faith. We don't struggle with faith any longer. We have faith inside of us. Let me show you this. Somebody mess, somebody's messing with me today. So let me show you this in the Bible. We don't struggle with faith any longer. We have the Jesus type of faith. The faith that ra- Jesus had so much faith in himself. He, no one raised him from the dead. He came out of the grave by himself. That's the faith that we have. It's a creative faith. And we have that faith. So when someone said to you, oh, you, you don't have no faith. So you're talking to the wrong person. I have faith. The same I have, I have skin, I have faith. Do you have faith? Do you have skin? Do you have eyes? Do you have faith? Beautiful. So we don't, sh- faith is not a factor. Because we have faith. In the gospel, Jesus said, Oh, you don't have any faith. But he was talking to Old Testament people who couldn't have faith because Jesus had to die for us. But now he's risen from the dead. And he raised up a new breed of champions, a new race of people who have his faith. And with that faith, we can do wonders. Galatians chapter, chapter 3. Let me show you in the Bible so you don't think I'm preaching heresy. Galatians chapter, are you here? Chapter, chapter 2. Chapter 2 verse, verse 20. See, I have faith. I have miracle working faith. I have the Jesus type of faith. Come on, see, I have the Jesus type of faith. I am crucified with Christ. Are you there? Nevertheless, come on, I live. Yet not I, but Christ 
but Christ, come on, liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the mustard seed of faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. It was the same faith that said, destroy this temple and I will, I will raise it up in three days. Amen. We don't have the muscle seed of faith. We don't have the measure of faith. We have the Jesus faith. Amen. Someone say, you know, we, everybody have, we have the muscle and we have to grow our faith. Nonsense. We have the Jesus faith based on that scripture. You see, there, there are different elementaries of Christianity. I want the highest realm of Christianity. Yes, oh, hallelujah. I want to walk with God like, like Enoch walked with God. He said here, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Uh -huh, I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So I have the Son of God faith in my spirit. And this faith don't need no help. It needs to be activated. It needs to be released. And you release it when you change your thinking. The more you change your thinking, the more the faith of God squeezes out of you. I'm talking to myself again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, who loved me? Who loved me? Huh? Oh, he loved me. Huh? Glory be to God. Who loved me and gave his life for me. He died for me. And he imparted he impart his faith. His faith. Now, look at the potency of his faith. He said, light be. And galaxies form. He came to Peter's boat one day. Peter said, we have fished all night. And there's no fish in this lake. He said, Peter, <laughs> with the faith that's in my spirit, the ocean have no choice but to respond to my words. I know there is no fish. I know there is no fish. But in Genesis, when I spoke to the water and I called for the abundance of fishes from the water, I can do it again. He spoke to the fish. He spoke to the water. And where there was no fish, fish start to move. Oh, come on, talk to me here. He met someone, uh, a woman that, that was, who lost her son, died. He, he walked up to the casket and said, little boy, arise. That's the faith we have in Christ. And that faith need no help. I don't believe in building up your faith and your, your oh, come on, man. Those are baby Christianity. I know you've been preached nice in North America, but that's baby Christianity. There's a higher place in Christ that God is calling us into where we can speak words and what we speak materialize. Because we have the God type of faith. When he spoke galaxies of form, you know why? He believed his words. Some of us speak all kind of craziness. My back is killing me. Your back is killing you? Oh, Pastor, I don't, I don't really mean that. I don't really mean my back is killing me. But you, you condition your mouth to speak that way. And you condition your mind to speak that way. And then when there's problems comes... You want to speak the God type of faith and, and your, your mind is confused. Which one should I believe? Your back is killing you or the cancer die? Which one? So God needs to clean your mouth up. Wash your mouth up with Listerine of the word. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God relates to you based on your relationship with him. And you have to determine, am I going to be a baby 
always crawling. I'm going to be a daughter of a son in his house. That when I speak, that God said, I have to confirm his words. Amen. Let me give an example of this principle. The angel came to Sodom. The Bible tells us that um, the angel told Adam, not Adam, help me here. Um, what is his name? Lot and his wife leave Sodom. They told him, if you look back at Sodom, That's right. you will turn into a pillow of salt. That's in the Bible. That's not a nice, that's really happened. But Abraham was on the mountain. Lot's wife looked back at Sodom and he became a pillar of salt. But Abraham was on the mountain, speaks of higher revelations with God. Look at Sodom and nothing happened to Abraham. God God relate to each of us based on our walk with him. Based on our relationship with him. Hallelujah. There are two Christians who can use the name of Jesus. One get the result and one scratch his head. How come it didn't work? It's relationship. So I'm trying to take us as a church to a higher realm. Where we can operate now. Not in, in the seed of faith. Not in the, not in the um, measure of faith. But in the God type of faith. The Jesus realm of faith. Hallelujah. Well, we don't, we don't, because sometimes we need things to turn around right now. We need to see the hand of God move right now. We need to see our cities turn around right now. Kids are on drugs. There must be a change right now. Divorce are happening. There must be a change right now. And we need the hand of God. We don't have time to, 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 to grow our faith, which is fine, but it's a baby round. And if you want to be a baby, I could teach you like a baby. Get you, get, get, get you, get you pamper on and get you, what do you think called? What do you call a thing? The baby on and you, and a peel with pebble, you know, with a little sauce and, and a little juice, and you, you, I burp you, and we go home. But then I have to change your diaper also. Too. I'm actually no one diapers. There must be a place where, where, where you can grow. <laughs> Baby Christians. Say I'm a child of God. Say I'm a child of God. When I speak, demons listen to me. When I speak, angels listen to me. When I speak, my daddy confirm my words. That's what I believe. That's what I'm raising you up to be. I'm raising, I'm raising kings in this place. Not babies. The baby get too much diarrhea and all kind of issues. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So, so we got to recognize our walk with God is first this way. This way. That's what faith has to be this way. Even though On the surface, things look bad. But for the surface to change, we have to look up. That's where our help comes from. And we have to agree with heaven. We have to agree with what God says. I know the doctors have diabetes. But I have to say, with his stripes, I am healed. I know the bank said there is no money for me. But I have to say, my God shall supply all of my needs. And you set your eyes up there. Maybe it's, it's easy for me to believe this way because, you know, I don't have nowhere to go. I don't have no family to turn to, to give me 100000 Maybe you guys have secret families and secret bank accounts. I don't. It's good if you have families with millionaires and Bill Gates is your uncle. I have to trust Jesus. So I, I have no choice over the years but to trust Jesus. Everything in this ministry here, have to trust Jesus for. This, the chairs, the microphones, everything, have to trust Jesus for the, everything here. We will trust him. So I have learned to, to use the faith of God that's within me. 
But I also learned there were some times where I wasn't seeing the manifestation of my faith. And I asked God, why? And he told me, it's because my mind was limited. My mind was the problem. So I want to share these things with you today. Come on. So we can grow. We can grow and manifest the kingdom of God. So let's go to Revelation now. Revelation chapter 3. Hallelujah. I'm come charged up, ready to go. Revelation um, chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 8. Believe this word. Don't fight this word. Believe this word. And let's read verse 7 for, for, this, for, for context. And to the angel at the church of Philadelphia, write these things, says he that is holy. He that is true. He that have the key of David. He, he didn't say the keys of David. The key of David. Because with Jesus, one key can open a million doors. You see, I have a key here called a master key. My key can open every door in this building here. Because it's a master key. We don't need 25 keys. We need the key of David. And with that key, we open the door of healing. Come on, come on. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, so we have that key. But, but let's, let's keep going here. And it said here, he that have, and he that, he that openeth, he that openeth, and no man shutteth. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and no man close, and shutteth, that no man can open. Then it's verse 8, it said, it said, I know thy works. Behold, behold. The word behold means I do. It said to look, to see. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. I, Jesus, I who was raised from the dead, I, Adonai, the creator, I have set before you an open door. So from his perspective, all the doors are open. Now, for me, to, for me to work with him, I have to come into agreement in my heart. All the doors are open. I don't care what the wall says. And I don't have to try to figure how to get them open. They are open. I don't need to learn 25 steps to, to kick them open. They are they are open. They are open. Now I have to see them open. With the eyes of faith, I have to see them open. Now, in the spirit realm, the spirit realm comes first. So in the natural, they may look like they are closed. But as long as I keep seeing, come on. That door of health open. Amen. The door of health have no choice to be open on the earth. But if I'm trying to figure out how to open the door on the earth first, that door will never be open. Demons will make sure you will never open that door. But when you see, when you lift up your eyes and see where your help come from, my help come from the Lord, the creator of the heavens and earth. And he said the door is open. I'm just dumb enough to believe that when he speak, he's telling the truth. I have sold out to him. If he, remember because I used to be a cook. And I was trained by the chef in cooking school. Follow the recipe. Don't be cute. Don't change the ingredients. Follow the recipe. And the recipe is before the cake. The recipe produced the cake. If I follow the recipe, I will get the cake. 
But if I change the ingredients, I might get something else. That's the realm of faith. And many people struggle with faith because they're trying to change the natural before the green with heaven. You have to come into agreement with heaven first for the natural to obey you. Hallelujah. Look at Jesus. He knew he was the son, he was the son of God. He knew that. But there were no miracles take place in his ministry when he was a baby. He didn't perform the miracle until he turned age 32. The Bible says he learned obedience to the things that he suffered. Which means there were some times where Jesus, remember now, Jesus was God, but he was still a human being. And as a human, don't stone me, don't stone me. As a human being, he didn't know everything. That's why when he came to the fig tree, he came to the fig tree to find out there was no fruit. If he knew everything, he would say, guys, there's no fruit there. Let's go home. But he came to the fig tree because he didn't function as God. He functioned as a man just like you. And what's so amazing about Jesus? He defeats Satan as a man. He paralyzed hell as a man. Do you hear me? He defeats Satan as a man, just like you. A man who sweat. Now he is the risen king that lives inside of me. No wonder he said, in all these things, you are more than conquerors. Now I'm preaching to myself, it's all right. Put them in Africa or someplace like that. He, 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 you hear me? Now you are not just human. You, you are 100% human. Oh my God. And 100% God. Past two weeks, are you sure? Listen to me. You are 100% God. In you, God lives in you. The Holy Ghost lives in you. He said, um, he said, you'll be flesh of my flesh, bones of my bones. But people, all they learn is about the human side and they neglect their divinity and wait for Sunday morning. But we, we are called to express that divinity Monday morning. Come on, Tuesday morning. Wednesday morning. You see, we are not physical people having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual people having physical experience. Do you hear me here? We are not just here trying to, we are spirits having physical experience. Not the other way around. He lives inside of us. Amen. 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 I'm excited about this. Now, he said that the doors are open and we have to come into agreement with him. So how do we go through those doors that is open? Let's go to John now. John chapter 9. This message. Because he, he liked when we struggle. But the struggle is over. Because he struggled on the cross for us. He was wounded for our transgression. He was struggling to breathe. He was struggling to breathe on the cross. So you can breathe freely. That's why every lung situation can be healed. Because he struggled to breathe so you can breathe freely. His hands were cursed so your hands can be blessed. His feet, his feet were cursed so your feet 
and be blessed. His head was cursed so intelligence can come to you. I don't believe in struggling. I believe in winning. All I need to do is get my mind to take on his mind and get my old thinking out of the way. Where did I tell you to go to? John, we have to go to those doors now. Go to those doors. John, I start teaching this in West Bank, but I want to go a little further now. John chapter, chapter 10, and um, we're going to read um, from verse 9. John chapter 10, reading from verse 9. Can you read verse 9 for me? One, two, three, go. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? He said, I am the door. I am the door. He is the door to himself. <laughs> he is the door to everything you need. I am the door by me if any man enter in. He's inviting us to enter in. He shall be saved. Those who enter in shall be saved and shall go in and out and find sickness and disease. And find what? Pastures. The word pastures, it means provision. Shall find provision. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the scriptures, the scriptures. Apostles taught me this years ago. And at first I didn't understand it. Until I had an experience with God. Every scripture is a door to Christ. The place of provision. Every scripture is a door to heaven. Every scripture. You don't have to die to go to heaven. Amen. He's still quiet in his house again now. Let's leave it alone. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in. Come on. And what? Out. Go in and out. And find provision. He said there is provision in me. I told her that day. When I had this vision of Jesus right here. I was praying for Elaine's Elaine, Elaine husband. He was struggling. I think he was on heavy doses of prostate medication for his prostate. And he came for prayer. I was preaching that night on the archives of heaven. That there are books in heaven about your life. Hallelujah. And if you can, if you can for example, if God opened up your mind to show you that you're going to live for 120 years. Okay? He showed you that. And then some demon trying to tell you by a doctor's report, you're going to die tomorrow morning. Whose report are you going to believe? Come on, come on, come on. Stay with me here. That's the archives of heaven. So I'm preaching. He was standing right here, right there. I reached over to pray for him. He fell down. But when I opened my eyes, Christ was standing right there. I saw him right there. And he told me something. He said, I want to take you into me. That's when I find out that Christ was not Jesus' last name. That Christ was a place. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the head of Christ. And then, he, then he's the door to Christ. He's the door to heaven. He's the door to himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then, he was holding my hand like this. He said, I'm going to take you into me. Then I went through him while I was holding his hand. 
Then we went through this place, this realm. And then all of a sudden the scripture came to me. In him, I live, I move, and I have my very being. Then I discover that there is a place called Christ. I want to show you. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Hallelujah. And those who enter that place will find provision. Verse 3. Blessed be God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us, come on, with, with all spiritual blessing, where? In heavenly places, in Christ. In Christ. Like I am in Canada. Like I am in Kelowna. Like I'm in, in this building. He has blessed us with everything. But those, all those goodies are in a place called Christ. The question, how do you get to that place? I'm going to show you. Oh, come on, come on. Because when you get to the place called Christ, you'll be okay. Nothing going to bother you. Bad news don't bother you. When you've been to Christ. Negative news doesn't bother you. When, you, when you've been to Christ. All of a sudden, everything in this natural realm is inferior. Now, how do you get to this place? Now, the word of God is so amazing. The word of God first is, there's a legal side of God's word. The legal side, which is the promises. They are legal. But then, there's an experiential side of the gospel. Does that make sense? It's like when you have a check and the person who had a check to you and he said, you, three million, and Bill Gates wrote it, three million, is legal. But until you cash it and start to spend it, you move from legal to experiential. Yeah. Come on, talk to me here. So, so now I want to teach you the experiential side of this verse here. How do you enter Christ? I've been there before. And every time I know, if I could get the atmosphere of Christ to come into the room, the devil is in trouble. I also know the problem that I'm facing is over. Even though, even though I don't know how it's going to happen, I've grown to a point where if the atmosphere of Christ can come into the room, <laughs> it's over. It's over. Say, say, say it's over. Say it's over. So how do you enter? He said that. Let's go back into John chapter 10. Are you with me here, right? Because in him, everything you need is in him. That's how we don't have to go nowhere else. He, he, he is the substance of everything you need. He's your banker. He's your lawyer. He's your provider. He, he, everything you need is in Christ. God told Abraham, Isaac, when there was a famine in the land, the Bible said Isaac desired to go to Egypt. God told Isaac, Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Stay in the land. The land is barren here. It's foreign here. Nothing is working. But when the atmosphere of Christ comes over barrenness. Yeah. And the Bible said Isaac saw and planted in that, in that land. In that land. The land where everyone was living. In that land. You must say, well, pastor, you know, well, can we be realistic? Really? The problem most people is this. They try to get into information and get away from revelation. And when they face problems that information cannot help them, 
They tried to come back home to revelation. And sometimes the sickness has gone so far ahead that they're too weak to talk now. Stay with revelation. Stay with faith. It might be slow, but it's guaranteed. Stay with faith. Say, I will stay with faith. It, 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 it might be slow. The, the wall is so, the wall is so fast. McDonald's press. Talk to a screen and order your food. Hey. People live like that. And they come to church. And they want the preacher man to preach quickly so I go home. You got to condition your mind for the things of the spirit. <coughs> Are you hearing me here? Yes. Got to condition your mind for the things of the spirit. But the war, especially in North America, we like things quickly. We we, we love the fast food, which is not healthy. I just love a nice, a good old steak that is cooked properly rather than McDonald's steaks. <laughs> Cook me a good steak. I could wait and, and, and until it finish. So let's go back to John chapter 10. Chapter 10. Uh, um, I want to show you this here. Remember now, every scripture is a duel. Every scripture is a duel. And the scriptures are meant for you to go through them. Can you believe this? Believe this. Receive this. I'm not deceiving you. I've been to these places. Every scripture is a duel. A duel is an entry point. A duel is an opening. He said, I am the duel. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture and find provision. So the question, how do you enter the door? Two ways. One, well, just basically one way. Now, I, I said this morning that the faith of God is already inside of you. So we don't need to work on our faith. Your faith is perfect because it's Jesus' faith. Now, what happened, our mind need to be unlocked. Because our mind has been trained by our environment. Remember the first time I thought my parents were so evil. They caused me to walk to school. In my mind, it was so far. Miles away. Then I went back to the Caribbean. I said, ah, it was next door. And I thought my school was so big. I look at the school. It was so small. As a child, my imagination was small because my environment was small. Come on. So what God wants for you to happen, he wants for your thinking to increase. To synchronize with the faith that's in you. So as your thinking grow, your faith get excited. Your faith start to dance. And finally, he has come home. He said, you have all this potential within you, but your thinking is so small. So as you, as you change, as your mind grow, as your thoughts grow, as your imagination grow. Because this means your faith can be powerful, but if your thoughts are small... The manifestation of your breakthroughs will be small. Come on. As your faith increases, as, you, as your mind increases, as your thoughts increases, your faith will have a target. Your faith is potent. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. If your hope is small, your results will be small. And your hope comes as a result of your imagination. 
Satan, the, the plans of Satan is to keep you small in your mind. Keep you small in your mind. Because you know, if you're small in your mind, your thoughts will be small, your words will be small. And even though your faith is powerful, your manifestations would be small. That's why I like to expose myself to people who are further ahead than me in the things of God. So, so I could have a mental picture. A mental picture. Come on. A mental picture. Because as your mind grows, your faith now has a target. So it's through mental stimulation. It's through what? Mental stimulation. Your mind needs to be stimulated by the word of God. Your mind, as your mind is stimulated, your mind starts to grow. And no longer, when you hear me preach, you can receive quickly. You don't fight any longer. You don't say, well, you know, that's not my doctrine. No. If it's in the Bible. Years ago, Apostle Charles would make some statement. And while he was preaching, my mind would be fighting. Well, what about this one? What about that one? What about this? While he was reading the scripture. The problem, my mind was fighting. And as long as my mind fighting, I would never walk in the inheritance of what he was talking about. And that's how Satan trapped his people. Even you've been a Christian. I heard a story about, about elephants that they, they discovered that many elephants would die in fire. And they wonder why elephants are dying in the fire. Then they discover that when the elephant was baby, they put a chain and the elephant leg. They only go six feet. And the elephant will go. And he will come at six feet. And he will stop. And in his mind. He thinks. I can only go six feet. And no more. So in the fire. Even though he had the strength. To break the house down. His mind stopped him. And he dies in the fire. All stories where you could put flies. In a, in a container and put the cover over it. And after a while, you remove the cover, the fly would even come out. It can be programmed. There is no way out of this situation. And Satan's strategy is to keep us small in our thoughts and tell us that there is no way. But I have one word for the devil. There is a way and his name is Jesus. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And all I have to do, I have to renew my mind. It might take some time of, of, of training my thinking. But as I, as, I, as I change my thinking and my thoughts get bigger, one of the best ways to help your thoughts is to expose your mind to something bigger. If you're living in a small apartment, go, go to mission and look for, look, just look at big house. Just to affect your thinking. Amen. If you're on a bicycle, you have no money, don't worry. Just go to buy a car place and look and say, one of these days I will come just to help your thoughts. Amen. I love this Irish testimony. She said when she lost the baby, she put some things in the middle of the floor and say, baby, how is that again? Baby shoes. And what is that again, daddy? They, they be filled. You hear me here? She have no baby as yet, but in the spirit, she saw the baby and she put baby shoes in the middle of the floor. Why? Faith, your mind needs to be stimulated. Your faith is perfect. It's just in the target. God told Abraham, Abraham, I promised your baby for 20, 20 years. It's taking too long. Abraham said, I'm trying, but there's no baby. Look at Sarah. Look at Sarah. Look at Sarah. 
Sarah is barren. God says, Abraham, come out from your tent. Come out from your small thinking. Come out from your limited imagination. Look at the stars. Count the stars. He started to count 10,000, 25,000. Oh, oh, there's so much. Then he get caught up. His mental stimulation, God said, so shall they see be. Yeah. And all of a sudden, stars become faces of babies. Stars become black faces, white faces, Chinese faces. Oh, stars become babies. And very soon, Sarah became pregnant. Mental stimulation. Then God told him, Abraham, that's good. Now, let's walk. Let's walk the seashore and count the sand. Count the sand. He said to count the sand. 20,000, 500,000. So shall thy seed be. Mental stimulation. God told Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 12. Jeremiah, what can you see? What can you see? What can you see in your imagination? What can you see in your thoughts? Jeremiah said, I see an almond tree. God said, so shall it be. Put it up, Jeremiah chapter, chapter 1, verse 12. Mental stimulation. Mental stimulation. Whew. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 11. Libro cosa. Libra satata. I'm going to pack skyridge out. I will pack skyridge out. I will pack skyridge out. We will have festival of miracles at skyridge. With a festival of miracles, many times they pass around, drive by skyridge. I want to see the cars parking there. I want to see the posters of all my guest speakers. Yeah, I'm going to pack skyridge out. If I could see it in my mind, God, I would do it for you. Don't mock me. Watch and see. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Maybe he was seeing sickness. Maybe he was seeing something else. But he said, he said, he said, and he said, I see a rod of almond tree. I see a rod of almond tree. Verse 12, verse 12. Then says the Lord unto him, thou hast well seen. For I will hasten, oh Shakaba. I will hasten, I will quicken my word to perform it. Let's make it negative again. Chapter 11. Moreover, the enemy said to Becky, What see it now? The extra report. The cancer, the bills, the barrenness, no husband. Pastor been talking about husband. There is no husband. I can't see no husband. Verse 12. And Satan says, thou hast well seen. For I will hasten that image to bring it to pass. And all of a sudden. It's two years, no husband. Three years, no husband. Twenty years, no husband. What can you see? What can you see? God is saying this morning, what can you see? If you can see right, I will do you right. If you can see right, so see yourself. Go to those doors and receive your inheritance.